the Cleveland Browns finally have a team that looks ready to compete at the top of the NFL. Drafting Baker Mayfield might have finally changed the course of history for this franchise that could never get that quarterback position right. And even though they missed the playoffs this year, the Browns were probably one of the most competitive teams this year and could have won a playoff game. Now I don't want to jump the gun because we have seen teams look really good one year and then completely fall off the rails the next, but I think the Browns have something special brewing and I wanted to dive into it. And it all started when they actually hired a good general manager to run the organization the right way. Now I gotta give a shout out to my main man Michael Lombardi because he would have done better if he wasn't fired so early in his tenure. But when the Browns hired John Dorsey, this was the best step the organization took to fixing their constant struggles. John Dorsey has an extensive background under strong organizations and great teams that when the Browns hired him, it was a no-brainer this was going to work. Dorsey played for the Green Bay Packers from 1984 through 1989. When his playing days ended, he began working for the Packers as a college scout in May of 1991. He spent many years working as a scout before being promoted to the team's director of college scouting in February of 1997. When Mike Holgram left the Packers for the Seahawks in 1989, John followed Mike to Seattle and took over as the director of player personnel. But after one season in Seattle, Dorsey resigned and went back to the Packers and took over his role again as director of college scouting. He would stay in this position all the way up until 2011, when he was promoted to director of football operations. But in 2013, Andy Reid, a former Packers assistant coach, when John Dorsey was with the Packers, was hired to become the next Chiefs head coach. And when Andy was hired, he hired John Dorsey to become the team's general manager. Now Andy was supposed to have final say in football decisions, but John ended up getting full control like other NFL team's general managers. In Dorsey's time with the Chiefs, he had 5 drafts and a 43-21 record. Overall, the Chiefs had a lot of success with John, and they drafted some great players that have the Chiefs where they are right now as one of the best teams in the NFL. He drafted Marcus Peters, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and Kareem Hunt. And he traded for Alex Smith, as well as drafting Patrick Mahomes, who is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. So with all this success, it is completely mind-blowing that the Chiefs moved on from him. But according to sources, John would make moves and do things without telling anyone or giving an explanation. He just wasn't the best communicator, and his management style was questioned because of how he handled the salary cap. But when he was fired, the Browns were looking at hiring a GM who had great experience and knew how to scout and draft great players. Because even in his time in Green Bay, he played a huge role in getting Aaron Rodgers, Greg Jennings, and Clay Matthews, since he was the director of college scouting. Now for the franchise that he was taking over, they have had an extensive history. Being one of the earliest franchises in the NFL, having 8 league championships and many Hall of Fame players, the Browns were one of the top teams back in the NFL back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. But when the NFL merged with the AFL, and the Browns became part of the AFC Conference, then the team started to struggle. But in 1985, the Browns drafted Bernie Kosar, and he led the Browns back to relevancy, taking the Browns to 3 AFC Championship games. In 1995, Browns owner Art Modell decided to move the team to Baltimore, but the city of Cleveland was allowed to keep their name and their colors in case they ever got another NFL team. In the 1996, 1997, and 1998 seasons, the city of Cleveland did not have an NFL team, until the 1999 season when the Browns were brought back as an expansion team. Now since 1999, they have gone through 10 head coaches and 29 starting quarterbacks. Yeah, you heard that right. 29 starting quarterbacks. But finally, on quarterback number 30, they found their guy in Baker Mayfield. Now I will say I was a huge Sam Darnold supporter, and I was not a big fan of them drafting Baker. Now I will admit when I'm wrong, and this was one of those situations where I was completely wrong. And after watching Baker Mayfield this year and seeing the energy that the Browns play with, I have completely bought in. John Dorsey drafted players that have completely changed the way the Browns play just in one draft. He took Denzel Ward fourth overall, who has been a shutdown corner and an in-state kid who played at Ohio State. And then the Browns got a feature running back in Nick Chubb in the second round of the draft, who is thankfully getting playing time now that Hugh Jackson is gone. Dorsey also traded for Jarvis Landry, a wide receiver who plays hard and is a leader for the Browns and a culture guy. And when your starting quarterback and best receiver are clicking, you will have a good team, and the Browns look just like that. Their team plays hard together, and that's one thing I've noticed this year that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but has been a huge difference. Now John Dorsey was basically given full control over the Browns when he got there, and the problem with the Browns over the years was their lack of a vision in the organization. It seemed like everyone wanted a different direction from the coaches, the owner, and the former general managers. But John built his front office up like the ones he had worked under in his career, and this blueprint is working. Now the one thing he didn't do right was hiring a new head coach when he got there. Hugh Jackson was the head coach for the previous two seasons for the Browns, and they only won one game in his two seasons. But John kept him around, and maybe that was his master plan all along, but it did set the Browns back a little bit. Hugh didn't play young players like Baker and Nick Chubb, and fans grew incredibly frustrated by his decision making. Now the one thing Hugh did do right was hire Bob Wiley. He is the man. Sadly, he was let go by the Browns this offseason. 
And that's because the Browns finally fired Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley after week eight this season and promoted Greg Williams to head coach and Freddie Kitchens to offensive coordinator. And after the season ended, the Browns decided to hire an offensive guy as their next head coach and Freddie Kitchens. Now coach Kitchens is not a flashy hire, but he is just going to get his teams to play hard and win. And that's exactly what the Browns wanted. And the Browns hired him two great coordinators as well. Their next offensive coordinator is Todd Monken and defensive coordinator is Steve Wilkes. Todd Monken will be a great offensive guy and is a veteran who looked at head coaching jobs this offseason. And Steve Wilkes is a really good defensive coach. And even though he got fired after one year as head coach in Arizona, the Browns defense will definitely improve under him, which is a scary thought for opposing teams. The Haslam's put John in charge of their head coaching search, and it's paying off having him run the organization now instead of more dysfunction. John Dorsey is established, and the Browns are about to take over the NFL if they keep playing hard for their new head coach. The AFC North is winnable this year for them, and I can't wait to see the new age Browns show the world just how much they've changed. Thanks for watching.